Hello, I'm John Bachman. A bipartisan group of senators have introduced a bill today seeking to lift the trade embargo against Cuba. The move comes just two months after President Obama announced that he wanted to normalize relations with the communist nation. The bill, according to its sponsors, would lift restrictions that prevent Americans from doing business with Cuba, but it does not repeal certain portions of the law dealing with human rights. The House Foreign Relations Committee is debating President Obama's request for more money to fight ISIS and a plan specifically the president proposed uh, includes the proposal includes a time frame of three years and leaves out an authority for a full scale ground war. But Republicans say we should not be putting limits on this president or future president's options. I believe that if we're going to authorize the use of military force, uh, the president should have all the tools necessary to win the fight that we're in. The authorization for use of military force will surely continue to flame a heated debate on Capitol Hill. Congressman Pete Hoekstra joined us here on Newsmax TV earlier today and says neither side really likes this proposal. It's written vaguely enough that you've got people on the left who say it gives the president too much authority. You've got people on the right who are saying it's not aggressive enough. Well, Hoekstra at, believes that the proposal will give President Obama and future presidents more flexibility. Well, the FBI Director James Comey delivering a speech at Georgetown University today, and he says America is at a crossroads when it comes to race relations and law enforcement. Something happens to people in law enforcement. Many of us develop different flavors of cynicism that we work hard to resist because they can be lazy mental shortcuts. The head of the FBI adds that the are, quote, hard truths that both citizens and the police need to confront. His remarks come months after the deaths of Michael Brown and Eric Gardner, as well as the killings of two NYPD police officers back in December. Now we're to Ukraine, where there is a new deal for peace today. But there are also questions about the details there. French President Francois Hollande says his country and Germany will verify that the ceasefire actually does take effect when it's scheduled to on Sunday. Russia's president claims the deal will also include giving the Russian-backed rebels more autonomy but Ukraine's president says that is not part of the deal. And while things remain tested between Presidents Poroshenko and Vladimir Putin, tensions are also high in the Ukrainian parliament. See for yourself here. It took, wow, look at this. Two Ukrainian politicians got into a fist fight today outside parliament's chambers. One of the deputies was left with a bloodied nose, but no one was seriously hurt. This video captured by Radio Free Europe, who reported the scuffle. But after all this, you can believe the guys shook hands and made up, and everything seemed to go back to normal. Back here in the U.S., Democrats are showing some love. For the city of brotherly love, they picked Philadelphia to host next year's Democratic National Convention in 2016. Republicans announced back in July that they would be holding theirs in Cleveland, Ohio. We'll have another Newsmax Now update coming up for you in 30 minutes. I'm John Bachman. We'll now send it back to Midpoint with Ed Berliner.